You are about to listen to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening to us at MaximumThreshold.net. Horns up, fists in the air. Maximum Threshold, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, this is Chad. Chad, what's up, buddy? Hey, Chad, hey, how what's are you? going on? Good, yourself? Uh, uh, not too bad, not too bad. Having a nice, uh, nice Saturday off. Nice. You're off, nothing going on, huh? You're all done, all wrapped oh, up no. and getting ready to hit the road, right, bro? Uh, yes, yes, and it's, uh, quickly approaching, so... Let everybody know when is the uh, EP officially hitting the streets. Uh, the EP is officially released on July twenty third, uh, two thousand thirteen. It's uh, Tuesday, as uh, as most releases come out on a Tuesday. Right. And uh, and if you here's where I go into the spiel. Ready? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Here we go. Wait. Hold uh, on. Let's give you a drum roll. If you go to headcharge. If you go to headcharge. dot com and and uh, pre order it. Uh, you get a, uh, a link for a, a digital download that you'll get a week early, so you'll get actually get it uh, July 16th. And uh, then we have some packages in there, you know, CD, physical CD, physical CD, and T-shirt, and poster, and some other stuff. So cool. uh, you can take a look there. Now, in bet- Chad, in between the long hiatus you guys had, and, and we'll get we'll get into that. Did you guys keep in contact all year? Did you guys? I'll go your separate ways, and then you kind of just came back together and said, "Fuck, man, we're getting a band back together, man." Like Jake and <laughs> Elwood did, or you know, no, the phrase, uh, the phrase, "We're getting the band back together" was definitely joked, joked about. Um, when when we kind of took that break, uh, which was, I'm going to say, 2009 to about 2009 to 2011. Um, uh, nobody was really talking to each other. I think I talked to Justin kind of here and there, uh, Justin Fowler, our keyboard player. Um, uh, there was, you know, loose communication before that, actually, between, like, 2007 when we got done touring Can't Stop the Machine and, um, uh, 2009. But, you know, we, myself and the rest of the guys in the band and, and Justin, who I was, was writing all these these new songs with and making all these demos, we were under the <laughs> the assumption that the band was still together, which we did not know that was the case, um, which is a, an odd feeling for somebody that started the band not to realize that your band actually isn't together. Um, you know, Cameron, Cameron had a kind of a different agenda at that point, and we didn't really, we weren't aware of that, you know, so we kept pumping out songs and pumping out demos and not really getting any word back, and so that's why eventually in uh, 2009 I, I just pulled the plug. I, I, there was nothing left. It was, the shelves were empty. So not a lot of communication, honestly. Um, uh, you know, we're, we all live in separate states. Uh, I, I live in Minneapolis. Uh, Chris or Christopher Emery, our drummer, is in Indiana. Uh, Justin's in uh North Carolina, South Carolina, one of the Carolinas, uh, and then the three guitar player, the two guitar players, and, and Cameron all live in, in Los Angeles. So there's not a lot of hanging out. You know, we don't all live in the same house like the Monkees or the Beatles or anything. Um, but we're, you know, we're obviously on all on speaking terms at this point and, and communicating and, and whatnot. So, so you got, you guys weren't using the break to like look each other to beat the shit out of each other if you saw each other or anything like that. What it didn't no. get that bad. No, we're definitely not. <laughs> we're definitely not cold chamber esque, you know, or, or uh, white zombie esque in that sense where we all fucking hate each other. I can swear, right? Yeah, By you're way. cool. Oh, yeah. No, you can't. You just can't. You can't okay. say cunty McShitballs. That's the only thing where we draw the line. You can't say that word. Yes. Okay. Um, but it, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a, you know a case where 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 we hated each other or anything like that. It was just. You know, addictions are, are, are very, very powerful things, and, and they change personalities, and they, they take people over. And, uh, you know, I know this definitely from first-hand experience, so I think I'm a little more understanding uh, when people fall and they're trying to get back up. So, you know what I mean? 
So you're saying Rick James was right when he said cocaine is a hell of a drug. Oh God, they're all hell. They're all oh. hell of a drug. Chad, all of them. Chad, give and, and a lot of your fans are listening. We actually took uh, some calls and answered some questions for you. Like right before you <laughs> called in, they were calling, blowing up the lines, asking us uh, if we were coming into California, and we were giving them a whole bunch of shit while you got kicked out of California and can never go back. Um, so tell everybody, go through it. I mean, the, the band actually started under some really fucked up circumstances, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the genesis of the band was, um, was rehab. You know, that's where Cameron and I first made contact with each other. So right there, you got two pretty fucked up people <laughs> deciding that they're going to like rope a bunch of other people into the, you know, the game and, and try to put a, put a band together and, and, you know, go play music. Um, and, you know, and it was, I wouldn't say a pipe dream, but, you know, it was infancy stages when we first met. You know, I mean, I, would, I had been a long a musician since I was six years old is when I started playing guitar. <laughs> and, um, I, I, you know, I just, I, that's what I do. I, there's never been a backup plan or a plan B or, a, you know, maybe I'll go to college or and none of that. It was always just music. And so when I moved from Los Angeles to Minneapolis, moved, being a, tra a netted tranquilized and shipped to Minneapolis to go to rehab, um, I, uh, I, I knew that I was going to start another band, and I, you know, I, I happened upon Cameron, and, and that's kind of how everything started. So, um, now that you guys are back together, what are you going to do to commemorate the passing of Doink the Clown? Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I should probably be more up on this. Um, I'm seeing this stuff on Facebook, and I, I'm kind of recently back on Facebook. I had a kind of a six-month sabbatical from that. Um, but uh, I, 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 sh I feel like I should know more about this guy, and he's apparently a wrestler, I guess. Is that, that, that's what's going on? You are correct, sir. I got, I got nothing for you, man. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, no comment. <laughs> so... Would you, would you, we have, we have a question coming from, uh, Beavis in the chat room, who's a huge fan of yours. Oh, yeah, he is. He wants to know, if you had to do one of these things, would you rather ride shotgun with Vince Neal to the liquor store, ride shotgun anywhere with Lindsay Lohan, or ride shotgun on a golf cart with Wild McBrown? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um. While wearing a, an officially licensed Man of War Fur loincloth and Devo hat. Mantle war loincloth. I, I, wow, I'm dating myself, but I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, and in the Devo flyer pot hat, huh? Yep. I'd probably uh, probably Lindsay Lohan because it would just be better for my career in general. Absolutely, dude. She, at one point, she was really hot. Wow, like you could at least. She was. She was. She was pretty uh, there for a while before she got all strung out and, and crazy. Yeah, higher she, she, did, she didn't look bad when she was naked and machete. That was, no, yeah. that was that was pretty. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. that I, wonder, was, I, I, I didn't mind that part. I wonder if she's got like yeah. the 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 bright pink lips, asshole like mo, like the a, a ginger. She's, she bleaches because she's redhead. You know, and I wonder bleaches. if she's got that. Like Paul Stanley, yeah, that's, yeah. So she's but got so like there, Casper. There are, there are very, there are many uh, variations of, of redhead now. Yeah, so, but one can only hope, I suppose. Yeah, like she's got a nice, tight, pink butthole that <laughs> needs <laughs> that needs tongue punches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep talking, but go slower. Okay. So what? You're you're out in California. Minneapolis. No, no, I'm actually in Minneapolis right so, now. So, um, while you were wearing that loincloth, did you ever think about doing a Prince tribute band? You know, I think I'm one of like four people that live in this state that doesn't like Prince. <laughs> uh, this city has a very, very odd stranglehold on any kind of uh, on any on any music that <laughs> really thrust Minneapolis into the spotlight. And it's like a you know very like it's like I said it's an F grip. Um, I'm you know if you open the weekly paper here, you know, the, the, the weekly rag, it's about a ten out of ten chance that you'll read something about either the replacements, uh, the rhyme sayers, uh, who's for do, 
Prince, Bob Dylan, you know, and, and it, it kind of just gets no, cycled out every no. week. It's kind of amazing how long they can hold on to things here. No more um, stay in the you know, motherfucking and, and, and time. I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to discount musical history here for this state or this city, but it is kind of amazing every week to, uh, to see uh, certain musicians mentioned in articles that have literally nothing to do with them. Um, it's, I, I really feel like sometimes it's a grasp to say, hey, look, we're viable too. You know? um, so yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate Prince, and I'm definitely a, the kind of musician that appreciates talent, um, just not really personally into his music very much. So you're more of a Morris Day in the motherfucking time fan. <laughs> if I had to choose, yeah. Because he did, he did have that creepy mustache, right? Yeah, leopard print, you know, shark skin. He's got a iffy, he's but... got a he's got a bear skin rug <laughs> in a fireplace too, and he's all the way live, baby. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All the things. Of the... Hey, we got a, We have a, a another question. Do you do you know Doug from Minnesota, also known as the Hellion? Um, I, uh, I, I can't really, I can't really say. I'm, I'm horrible with names. Uh, I have a very, very bad, uh, name recall. Uh, pretty good with faces, uh, but that kind of depends on when I met you. Uh, the, you know, the years between 2000 and 2007, pretty blurry. Um, very selective memories there. Uh, so I, 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 might, I might not. I can't say. Chad, when you guys got together and you recorded the EP, you actually recorded it here in Cleveland, right? Uh, that was one of six places. Yeah. Yeah, it was the traveling the traveling show, right? Yeah, it, it was. It, it was. Uh, it was Cleveland. Um, it was. Uh, let's see, here in Minneapolis, it was three studios in Los Angeles. It was uh, about a month at the uh, at the Dirty Hands Mushroom Head Studio. Um, this, this EP bounced all over the country. Louisiana uh, for, for mixing, uh, back to LA for mastering. Um, it, was, it was done all over the fucking place. And it was, it was a, it was a Herculean, Herculean, Her Herculean. Herculean. Whatever. It was a it was yeah. quite the effort, like that way. And this, uh, when I listened to it, and and you know, Jason was kind enough to give me a shitty recording on uh, SoundCloud to listen to, so I couldn't really get the full effect of it. And I say that kidding around. Um, no, I know, I know. We're just being, we're just being safe. Um, it was, it was really more mature, and it, it, it was, it was more focused than. The previous two and the uh, and the previous two are good. I I like them a lot, especially uh, the the War of Art. Um, but it was it was much more mature musically. You, uh, you could see the the progressions you guys have made throughout the years, and it was just like a, a controlled frenzy type of thing. Did you guys re, were you aware of that and said, "Hey, we just want to show people that we've grown over the years," or is that just how it came out? And you guys were like, "Whoa, this it just turned out really cool." Mm hmm. Um, I wish we had that much forethought. No. <laughs> um, the, the initial idea when we went, when we recorded the basic tracks for the CP, which, uh, which were done in November 2011, that's how long this has taken to finish. Let me just reiterate that. Um, when, when we did that, the idea was we had this, we were offered studio time. Uh, and it was like we had like 26 or 28 hours that we could use. Um, and we had a day off. So we're like, fuck yeah, let's, let's get in there. And, you know, we, we were just on our first little tourette of the Midwest. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we had gotten together. You know, we have a lot of material right now uh, to work with as far as the next record that comes out. And when we were talking about possibly doing a CP, uh, we, for that little tour, we had rehearsed, I think it was like five new songs, mm -hmm. just to kind of play some new stuff and just, you know, get back out there. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, we had this very disparate group of, of tunes, you know, that we were doing on that tour. And so the idea was to just, you know, hop in the studio real quick, throw down some tracks, make a quick, fast, and dirty uh, kind of live EP, and just get it out to the fans real quick. You know, no major thought, uh, no major, you know, uh, plan or anything. It was very, very much on the fly, and it was, it was kind of, uh, you know, we were just taking advantage of the time we were offered. Um, it, it didn't quite work out that way, <laughs> as you can as you can tell. Um, you know, I'm very actually I'm really surprised to hear you, hear you guys say that it sounds as cohesive as it does, um, because to me it's there are five songs that are just kind of randomly that were randomly available for us to be able to record. You know, I think it actually worked out if you listen. Or when 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 people listen to this EP from front to back, there is kind of an arc to it, um, you know. It, but not as much, not nearly as much as say, you know, the War of Art, which was this big, giant, sweeping, you know, hills and valleys kind of arcing audio uh, storyline. You know, it was a big, giant, you know, audible art piece kind of. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really think of the EP like that. And that's probably just personal because I know how how it was, I know how it, it came to be, you know. But I'm glad it sounds like we, we knew what we were doing because, you know, we, we don't. <laughs> Absolutely. How much, how much input did Sin have with that? Um, Jesus Christ. As far Christ. as the recording, uh, writing and recording, um, not very much. I mean, we had just gotten him in the band. Yeah at the time, you know, and, and that was kind of his maiden voyage to see, you know, if personalities were going to work out on the road, and, you know, we've had, you know, we've had a lot of guitar players over the years, and, and we, when we got back together, we kind of, I think it was kind of unspoken that it was kind of a five piece yeah. with a touring guitar player, you know, when we first got back out there in 2011. Um, I think it's, it's become much more he's become more uh, more a part of the band mm -hmm. um but you know that stuff takes time he's a cool and, guy man. You know, since, I, since i've been guy. with cameron for what 13 or 14 years cameron and justin for years now and in karma for <laughs> about eight and and chris for you know just as long as cameron cameron and justin uh, so we have we have very very long involved history you know and sims and sims kind of the new guy that's just yeah. the way it is um but I, you know, I have a feeling that that if it continues to work out, that that Sin will definitely have a say in in uh, writing and recording the new record. And is that already started? Do you have anything left over from the the EP, or was the EP just to, you know, get your? No, let me put let me put it this way: the EP was, and I don't want to use the term leftovers, like you know, or anything. But the you know, the EP was just five songs that we had to choose from a, a pile of about. 28 or 29 songs. Those uh, we have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of things to pick from when we when we start actually uh, deciding what to work on for the for the next record. Uh, a ton of stuff, and that's those are all actually completed, finished songs. This is not mentioning you know the 50 or 60 riffs I have on my phone from the past couple years that you know I, I teach at the School of Rock and mm -hmm. and. So I have a guitar or a bass in my hand all day long, and I'll just get these ideas, and I record them on my phone really quick, and I move on. And so I've got tons of stuff to work with. We, we have an influx of material. It's, it's definitely, uh, we're not wanting for, for uh, source material at all. Cool. And you guys actually do a cover of Patti Smith's Rock and Roll Nigger that turned out really cool on the EP. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was, uh, that was actually Justin's idea, our keyboard player. Uh, we were batting around. Uh, we always, well, not always, but kind of in the in the last <coughs> last larger part of uh, of of Head Charge, we kind of like to do cover songs, pick a cover song and do it on tour. And uh, we were throwing stuff back and forth, me and him, and he just texted me and said, "Rock and Roll Nigger." Yeah. And I was like, "That's that's genius. Let's do it. It's a super fun song. Uh, it's." very incendiary, you know, it's got the N-word in it, 
so it makes people nervous. What's that? Probably they makes people nervous for the rest of their lives. And um, yeah, so it was just kind of like I said, it was just a it was just a fun song, and that was one of the the, the things we were doing on that tour. And we had been playing it, we were tight with it, and it was let's throw it on you know the EP. I have so um, you know we, we didn't stray really really super far. Mm-hmm. We didn't try to do some like weird industrial remix of, of a Patti Smith song. We we stayed pretty true to it, but it, you know it's an awesome song. There's not much you can really do with it. Gotcha. I got a question here from area code seven six five. They didn't give me no name. They just said, "What direction lyrically do you see American Head Charge taking in the future?" Uh, lyrically, is yes. That what you said? Yes. Um, God, I don't know. Probably just you know. It's, we're we're not you know a message band. I think I think people kind of have figured that out by now. You know we don't we don't champion any causes or rally against anything mm-hmm. you know specific. Um, American Head Charge lyrics tend to be pretty ambiguous, kind of mm-hmm. kind of nebulous. Yeah, you can you can pull four different meanings out of a line, which is something that I I really like about uh-huh. us. And I like uh, I like how Cameron writes like that, and and I write the same way, you know. Um, uh, I like leaving stuff up to the listener as opposed to drilling something into their head that's very surface. And um, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of, I want, I want you to to think about it, and and, and choose your own meaning as far as mm-hmm. something being very clearly laid out. Um, so you'll probably get more of the same. I guess I could answer the question like that. Gotcha. I got another question here from DMT in Iowa, also known as DVT, saying, how many songs are we looking at on shoot? And any, you, know, you just answered a question about any covers. Uh, shoot's five songs. It's an EP, you know, five songs. It's about, about half a record. Um, and the cover is, you know, Rock and Roll Nigger by Patti Smith yeah. uh, from... Uh, from 1978, um, where most of you weren't even born yet. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, short and sweet. It is what it is, you know. Cool. I got another one here. This is another one of your fans. Uh, this is a New Jersey fan here. They're saying, hey, Max with Threshold, Ryan from New Jersey here. Got a question for Chad. I know the, band's, the band name has no real meaning, but why was the new EP titled Shoot? Uh, the, the, uh, the new, the new EP is titled Shoot, uh, because it sounds good. Because they couldn't uh, title it I, Shoot. I really don't, I don't, I, I think sometimes people think we have, I mean, we do have general grand designs on what we do. Um, but I think sometimes people look a little too far in, in, into what we do or, or the way we maybe put ourselves out there, um. Originally, the EP was going to be called Interstice. Uh, Interstice is a, a small opening, um, kind of a gap in between things. Uh, and the idea was it did actually kind of relate to our very, very spotty record career. Um, and where this was, you know, there had been a gap, and now there was something, and there was going to be another gap, and then there was going to be a record. So actually, that was one of the few times that that we were actually going to name something with with an actual purposeful meaning behind it. Um, and then you thought better, as, right? Uh, as, well, as, as time went on, we all kind of moved away from that feel. And uh, it actually, the reason it's, we started to talk about the name change was it became so frustrating not to be able to get this EP done correctly. It was bouncing from studio to studio and and the mixes, you know, weren't right. They weren't what we were looking for. And it was just this, we were beating our head against the wall. And I jokingly sent a, an email out to everyone that said, I just want to name this, this EP Jesus fucking Christ. It, it, was, it was beyond annoying. I don't, even, I don't even know how to put it. It was banging your head against the wall. It's a pretty good uh, analogy. Um, so Justin shot back to me with shoot, and I said that's fucking awesome, without really much thought. And I kind of quickly sent that out to everybody, and everybody said, "Yep, yeah, that's good." And uh, so there you have 
why it's called shoot. There's absolutely no reason other than just kind of sounds cool. Cool. All right, Chad. Well, I mean, you, you know, you can look. I mean, if you want to look for for meaning, I mean, shoot dope, shoot guns. I mean, it all kind of you know Super travels low. back to us in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just kind of a short EP, short name. Shoot, shoot a hot, steamy load all over Dom's man titties. <laughs> Oops, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Did I say that out loud? No, I, I didn't hear you. Actually, he's, a, about he's Italian, so it would be prosciutto. <laughs> prosciutto. Or capicola. Oh, capicola. Capicola. So is is when you were when you're out at uh, when you're out in California in rehab, did you see Rodrigo, Paul's manservant? I heard that uh, Paul sent him to rehab years and years and years ago. Paul Stanley. Oh yeah, Paul Stanley. Oh, I didn't know he ever. I didn't know he ever had a problem with anything. No, no, his manservant Rodrigo did. Oh, his manservant. <laughs> yes. His no, I was. I was actually in. A, I was in detox one time with. Uh, I know you're not supposed to call people out, but I don't know what happened to this chick. Um, I was in detox with uh, Casey Nicoli, which was uh, Perry Farrell's wife from Jane's Addiction. Nice. And and. Uh, she and I thought I was doing bad, man. <laughs> she was not doing well. Somebody's she always got it worse than you do, man. Say again? Somebody's always got it worse than you do. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and, and I'm not sure if, you know, heroin's a, like, you know, a hell of a drug. Heroin's a so, hell of a drug. Uh, oh, yeah. We sound better. Well, actually, and then uh, and to name drop one other, I, I was actually, I was told this, uh, that when I went to, when I came out of here to go to rehab uh, to Minneapolis and I was at uh, uh, one of, or, you know, the largest treatment facility here in this state, one of the top two in the country, um, I was apparently in Lane Staley's bed, which I thought was interesting. Better than his couch. Yeah, this fucking cat yeah. eating you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say his casket. That would probably be a, a bad place to be. Isn't, uh, isn't rehab for quitters? Let's be honest. Uh, if it works, yeah. Fuck, it took me forever, man. It ain't when you finish; it's yeah, as I, long as you do finish. Yeah, it's like a yeah. marathon. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was I was in and out, in and out from uh, for probably fifteen years, you know, um, you know, and now I'm I'm looking at what, about six and a half years of of having my fucking head on straight. So good for you. Yeah, it's for quitters if you can actually quit. So what is what's the worst thing you've ever done for drugs? Did you ever bleach Paul Stanley's asshole? No, <laughs> I would have. I absolutely would have. That would have been a great story. I would have done it with a fucking smile on my face. Um, I you know I, I never I never did any kind of weird sexual stuff you know for drugs. I never prostituted myself or uh, anything like that. Although uh, you know I was hanging out with. Uh, Spanish transvestites on Santa Monica Boulevard there stealing everything that wasn't painted or nailed down for a couple of years. But um, I, 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 used to, I, had a, I had a full span there of time in the early 90s where I was breaking into, uh, breaking into houses that were uh, earthquake damaged from the big earthquake. Nice. Uh, and uh, breaking into stores, kind of burglary kind of stuff. You know, I was definitely a, not a good guy. So are you clean, clean, or do you still smoke the Chiba and drink, or are you, like, completely sober, or are you Hollywood sober? I, I, I have my own way of doing, doing things. Um, I'm, I'm not AA sober or anything like that. Um, that never, it never really took with me that, that kind of group mentality and, and, I, and I, I will not say anything bad about it because anything that that helps somebody you know keep their life together and stay upright and breathing I you know I gotta say that's you know more power to you and as long as you ain't um, hurting other people it just wasn't for me you know so uh, I definitely I just got my own way of doing things you know and I I'm a, I'm a citizen now that pays his taxes and uh, and, and I'm legally uh, okayed by the state of Minnesota and all other states to carry a you know a firearm, and I'm you know I'm a trusted yes. citizen these days, gentlemen. 
So now you don't. So, uh, if you ever go back to that lifestyle, you don't have to break and enter. You could just hold people up, hold them the fuck up, and pistol whip them. Put that gun sideways oh, like yeah. in fucking Gangsta Boys in the Hood. That's right, Captain. I, bitch, I, better have I, my I money. Enough, That's right. <laughs> I got enough guns for you guys too. If you want to help me out. Yeah, we're down, man. We got nothing going on. That's right, we're silly. <laughs> do, do you have any zebra striped guns for Dom and his baloney tits? No, I, uh, I, don't, I don't have any pink guns either. <laughs> Good. Pink guns are for pussies. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm, we're supposed I don't to know ask. if I can say that with a pink forty five you know, pointed in my face. But. <laughs> <laughs> what do, we're supposed to ask Sur- him something about surly beer surly in Minnesota. Surly beer in Minnesota. Surly beer, uh, yes, a very popular, uh, very, very popular beer here in, in Minneapolis. I have no idea what it tastes like. <laughs> nice. I heard it's good, though. All right, Chad. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. We'll let you get running. We know you're busy and you got a lot of stuff going on. And tell Jason when he gets back from O Canada that he should uh, get us a, good, a proper sounding record uh, recording of the EP. He still owes it to us, and uh, we hooked, you know. We hooked up to SoundCloud so we could listen to it to, to get the review out, but we would really love to hear it mixed properly and not coming off of shitty uh, computer speakers. Yeah. All right, I will tell him. I'll be talking to him Monday when he gets back. Killer. Uh, we'll... if for, for those of you listening, Jason is our, is our fine manager. A good guy. Jason very good Spider. guy. Yes, very good guy. Before... One of the few good guys that I've had to deal with in the past 13 years, actually. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to have somebody actually on our side that doesn't have um, alternate, you know, motives and sneaky, agenda. subversive motives. Yeah. Cool. Can I can I get you to do a favor for us, Chad, before we let you go? Absolutely. You do a promo ID for us. Tell us your name. You know, the band you're in. That you're listening to Maximum Threshold, and throw some crazy shit in at the end if you want to. All right. Are we gonna do this on the air or off the air? Yeah, yeah do we that. do it now. Uh, let's do it off the air. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Hold on one well, second. Thank, I, want to say, I want to say thank you guys very much. Thanks for having me on and, and uh, giving uh, giving me the chance to, to talk to all your listeners and, and all of our fans and and, uh, and just really start to push this EP and let people know that, that we're back. I, I really appreciate it. Hey, real quick, Chad. We didn't. You didn't tell everybody where we can find your music and your tour info and all the news about you guys. Uh, yeah, um, all information regarding uh, American Head Charge being back together on tour. Uh, all information regarding the new EP shoot that is coming out July 23rd can be found uh, on headcharge.com or our Facebook page. Uh, you know, Facebook slash American Head Charge. Uh, we're also on Twitter, uh, at AHC Official. And uh, if you look a little harder, you can find uh, myself or Justin also on Twitter. Um, you know, usually Facebook's a good place to go, but if you want to pre-order the EP, the only place you can do it to get a physical CD at this point in time is to go to headcharge.com and pre-order that stuff. Awesome. All right, Chad, thanks, bro, and uh, we're going to... Uh Click the off air button here in a second. We'll get you to do that promo for us. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Hang on. Hold tight for a second. All right, Chad. We're off. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, I have a tendency to to step over my fucking own tongue. So I figured to save people the agony of listening to me fuck something up eight times in a row, I would just do it afterwards. That's cool, man. We appreciate it. Sorry to put you on the spot, man. Oh, that was all good. You ready? Yep. All right, go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi, this is Chad Hanks from American Head Charge, and you are listening to Maximum Threshold Radio. Something. I'll get something there. Hold on. Um, <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> well, let's just, you know what? Let's just stay right there. That was good. That's good. Oh, sounds good. That's, cla- that's classic. It's nice. classy, not classic. Okay. <laughs> classic makes me sound old like I am. Right. <laughs> unless, unless you want to talk about Paul Stanley's bleached asshole, I mean. <laughs> hey, you know what? Give me one more. Do it. All right. Hit it, there Cece. All right, we're ready. Hi, this is Chad. Oh, oh say good? Yeah. All right, sorry. 
We're ready. All right. Here we go. Hi, this is Chad from American Head Charge. And when I'm not trying to bleach Paul Stanley's asshole, I'm listening to Maximum Threshold. <laughs> well played, yes, sir. Bravo. There you go. Awesome. Okay, Chad. Hey, well, thank right. you again, man. Thanks, Chad. We appreciate it, man. We'll see you when you get the, get to Cleveland. All right. I'll see you guys there. Thank you again. You You're too. welcome. Thanks. Sure. All right. Bye. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> and here you go, man. This is that American Head Charge for you. <laughs> we back after this here at Maxim Threshold. Who is this again? This is Chris Emery, the drummer for American Head Charge. Oh, cool. What's up, Chris? Yeah, I was going to stop in and say, hey, when I'm not busy watching chat bleach assholes, I'm listening to Maximum Threshold. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be on the air, so don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the, well. the, 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 <laughs> pro, the promo IDs are better when they mess, mess it up and call That's us right. the wrong name. Like <laughs> maximum overdrive, <laughs> maximum overdrive, Mexican thunderbolt, Mexican thunderbolt. Dude, our favorite when they got our name wrong was American Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> that was American Hedgehog with. What are you saying? That's American amazing. headache? No, no, it's American Hedgehog. Chad's Hunter. gonna hate us now, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Well, it's good. Anyway, it, hey, it, I, I've, I've got a grunt, but anyway, I just wanted to say, uh, good job. I'm gonna enjoy listening to your uh, show. Oh, Sweet, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks, man. We'll see you when you get I'll, in Cleveland. Wait till you the next interview we got coming up next. It's even okay. Who's that? Some Bye, militant. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Take care. You're welcome. <laughs> we got busted. busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm never fucking know. Nope. you ass. <laughs> oh no, we're not recording. <laughs> I tried to improvise. <laughs> was, was I supposed to stop recording the show? I couldn't do that. What did I tell him? Hold on. All right. You're okay. cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. This, oh. Oh. this American head. There, Daniel, yeah, I wish they would there goes our him. chance to see him in Cleveland. <laughs> American Hedgehog. American Head Cheese. I wonder if they made a shirt with the hedgehog on it. That would be bad. Let's get on. No, you're not. You have just listened to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening and please visit us at MaximumThreshold.net.